here this morning. Got a mighty fine looking audience, uh, number wise and uh, quality wise as well. Thank you for being here today and hope you'll come back be with us anytime you possibly can. Um, some of us did get to go to Freedom Harmon University lectures for a couple of days this past week. The highlight of the day always is open forum. We we'll take for an hour of questions from students and the audience of hundreds of preachers and elders. And uh, every year when I come back, I try to spend a lesson or two on Sunday evenings with you about some of the notes I took from some of the questions that were asked. So we'll do that tonight, the Lord willing. Hope you'll come and bring your Bible and uh, we look at and perhaps next Sunday night as well. Uh, as we think about uh, questions from open forum, do hope you can be with us. Um, uh, good to see uh, Jeff and Kathy Stelton back there, and Jeff and Sammy and Kathy honored uh, their dad, uh, Brother James Stout, yesterday, a beautiful setting, and for his 90th birthday. So we're very proud for love Brother James and his family very much. And um, this preacher was... Um, the sermon is titled this morning, the, the greatest sermon possible, the greatest lesson. And uh, this preacher had preached a very fiery message, and uh, he was quite full of himself. And he and his wife were heading home, and he said to her, he said, How many really great preachers do you know? How many really great? You've heard a lot of preaching for years. And she said... Well, I have to think about that. I have heard a lot of preachers, but uh, she said, I don't know the number. I have to think about it. There's probably one less than what you're thinking of. <laughs> one less. You're going to hear a great sermon this morning. In fact, it's uh, the greatest sermon because um, it was preached by the greatest preacher that ever preached. As Brother Dallas said, it's the Sermon on the Mount. And seeing the multitude, Jesus went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. He opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the pure in spirit. There is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are that mourn, they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. The greatest sermon has a lot of beatitudes, beautiful beatitudes. You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It sends forth good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. You're the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel of all a candlestick, and he giveth light to all them that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I, I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For I've heard to say unto you that till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it all be fulfilled. And whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a call shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka! shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath all against thee, leave thy gift before the altar, and go thy way, and first be reconciled to thy brother, then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, while thou art in a way with him, 
lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou shalt be cast into prison. Early I say unto thee that thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. You've heard that it was said of them old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It's profit for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body be cast into hell. If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. Cast it from thee. It's proper for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body be cast into hell. It's been said of them that whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say to you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, cause the third that commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Great sermons talk about the home. Again, you have heard that it hath been said of them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but thou shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. I say unto you, swear not at all. Neither by heaven, it's God's house, throne. Nor by the earth, it's his footstool. Neither by Jerusalem, it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair of white or black. But let your communication be, yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than this cometh of evil. You've heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man would sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow thee, Turn thou not away. You've heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love your neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you that love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. He sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than the others? Do not even the publicans so? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Great sermons have a lot about forgiveness. <coughs> Take ye that you do your alms before not before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you shall have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly when thou prayest. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. How oh, they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. They have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. And after this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Great sermons 
have a lot of emphasis upon prayer. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you forgive not men their trespasses, neither would your Father forgive you your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou mayest, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where fault moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust can corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Great preaching emphasizes the heart of man. The light of the body is the eye, and if thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. He that will hate the one and love the other, else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Nor yet for your body, what shall we put on? Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, they sow not and neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that your heavenly Father feedeth them, they're not gathered in the barns, but are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to his statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Judge not that you be not judged. For well, what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And what measure you met, it shall be measured you again. And why beholdest thou the boat that is in thy brother's eye, and considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mona out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast the beam out of thine own eye. Then thou shalt see clearly to cast the mote out of thy brother's eye. Great preaching rebukes hypocrisy. Give not that which is holy to the dogs. Neither cast your pearls before swine. Lest ye trample them, they trample them under your feet. And they turn again and rend you. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. What man is there of you whom, if his son should ask bread, will he give him a stone? If he should ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even also to them. For this is the law of the prophets. Enter in at the straight gate, will cause wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, 
which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravaging wolves. You'll know them by their fruits. The men gather grapes of thorns <coughs> or figs of thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that says me, Lord, Lord, said unto the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man that built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Great sermons have warnings about listening to the words of Christ. You just heard the greatest sermon ever preached. Do you need to respond to it? Would you come now while we stand and sing? Hear the voice of Jesus say, Come